all right good morning everyone uh, I'm here in Augusta Georgia this is Daniel Field It's now about 7 35 I just came in it's uh, uh, January 18 it's kind of pretty cold today so one thing about being part of an aviation club as a student pilot uh, a lot of time you're gonna do everything yourself it's not like you in school where they do everything for you you show up you get on a plane you do your pre-flight pre -flight, and you're done being part of a club you're gonna have to know and kind of do everything yourself so no one is gonna be called today uh, I called ahead uh, before I got here I called the flight line I asked him it would be nice if they uh, preheat the, the plane that way when you're trying to start the engine you wouldn't have problems so I got that going but when I arrived this morning and I started doing my pre-inspection and uh, pre-flight, I realized uh, whoever flown the plane last night or yesterday didn't get the plane topped off. So I just called the fuel line to have the gentleman come back again, so he could top off the plane. Um, yeah, so through a great day, uh, I think it's broken 2,700. So. So I've been flying for about six months. I've done my solos and I've done a lot of things and I'm getting ready to do my uh, my written test here next week. I think I'm ready, I'm pumped up, ready for that. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a near, uh, near future video and tell you what I did and what material I used to study. Uh, but I'm standing in a pattern today, kind of work on short field landing and soft field landing and takeoff. Uh, some maybe some emergency procedures so stay in the pattern uh, not going too far with, with it being broken 2700 with the field elevation here about 400 so we should be fine uh, below 500 uh, so one thing about when you come here to the if you being part of a, a club is really great it saves you a lot of money if you're gonna fly a lot um because of all the fees you're going to be paying and the monthly dues and all of that but it's worth it i like the scheduling where i could schedule when i want to fly uh, i don't have to rely on uh, the schools because you know schools uh, have a lot of students and the schedule is tight and sometimes you don't get the hour you want to fly so part of that i mean the plan always going to be put into uh put to bed when you come out here you're going to have to kind of remove everything set the plane up and and do all the great thing so i've already did check my uh fuel quantity as i mentioned and i'm very low on fuel so uh, i'm expecting the flight line um gentleman to come here in a minute in the meantime i will just go ahead and uh finish my pre-flight uh pre yeah while i'm waiting on my uh cfi to arrive so i'm at the point where i really don't need the cfi as much as i needed at the beginning uh, especially i've completed all my solos and my night uh flights uh, i'm a little bit i think i'm at the 60 hours now i think uh so i feel very confident in flying the planes and and just get ready for uh take the check ride hey check ride everybody get nervous when you hear that word check ride but that's what we do that's what you strive for from day one you know when you got into this you know there's going to be a check ride to demonstrate your ability and capability and confidence be able to fly this plane safely all right so i have this nice uh checklist here always use your checklist i don't care how many times you used it in the past you always need to use your checklist i don't care if you memorize it it's always good to learn now to use the checklist so you don't forget anything because from time to time trust me you're gonna miss something it's gonna be small but it's gonna cost you so i've already started the cockpit checklist uh the master switch was on i turn it on check the fuel that's how i knew i don't have the proper fuel on the plane and not only that don't depend on the gauges right you still have to go and physically inspect and look and check flaps are down and the master switch off and i move the control lock why so when i walk around the plane i'm able to 
see uh, if my controls do works right um so exterior inspection left wing condition fuel quantity uh some controls surf p-tuck all of that so i typically start right here and i check rivets the static port make sure it's in it's not blocked while i'm here kind of still check my strut and make sure everything is good uh, ac horn it's pretty cold today heat up check for that make sure it's not blocked it's good nothing missing nothing cracked no fuel leaking or oil or anything abnormal everything intact you want to check every big small uh there's no need to rush this is the one thing you really need to take your time you got to get this right you don't want to fly and this is why you you move that uh yeah all right so you inspect everything so one of the reason you remove that lock and control so you're able to do this and check okay uh hopefully my camera not doing anything crazy uh i got this thing worn on my head so i'm inspecting all that it's my drain my fuels check 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 Check. 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 Make sure nothing is missing. Inspect the top. Ah, oh, here, my man. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? Good. How are you? Take off the preheater so I can feel it because I can't feel it this morning. Okay, okay, no problem. What time are you leaving? You, uh, with, you waiting on Paul? Yeah, he should be here in a minute. Okay, I was planning for right. zero 08, All but right, Paul is just, zero uh, 08 30 now. Yeah, yeah. Just move it. I'm not going to turn it off. No, no, I appreciate you, man. So, I got you working this morning. It's too early in the morning, man. That's cool. <laughs> I didn't expect the fuel not to be. You know, I thought I was who? Here by the front counter, so I answered the phone. Yeah, I appreciate that because I wasn't Normally sure. Those people on the counter don't reach till eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah, no, I was surprised when you picked yeah. that up. I was like, my lucky day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's always good to have a good relationship with the people who who work on the fly line. I cannot tell you. You gotta be nice to people, no matter what. Even if they're the wrong, you just gotta be nice because they are the one that's gonna come help you. Fuel the plane, take care of when you need something, right? Uh, these people are not part of the club, but they are part of the, the airfield management. GPS, right? Uh, so, like this gentleman really didn't have to answer the phone. I was lucky, he helped me, he recognized me. Uh, he could have said just call back when they open, but it was not enough, nice enough to do all of that uh -oh. all right so since the fuel truck is here let me uh educate you a little bit hey i'm just recording a little video oh, so okay. if you don't mind so you always gotta ground the airplane yeah. right always that's important that why do we ground the plane uh this is to uh neutralize the charge on the truck on the plane that way we don't have any sparks okay because you know there's always uh the air okay especially in this cold weather right uh, yeah that's true yeah it's kind of dry so yeah it's more uh, likely to happen here uh, once i get everything set up it's just good to go all right you know when i was a young sailor in the navy 
I used to fuel the planes and uh, do all of that. Oh yeah, man, pushing 50 psi. <laughs> yeah, putting thousand pounds in that jet. Yeah, I was. I'm surprised they typically they call and fuel the plane. I mean, the plane flown like in the afternoon, so there's no reason why not to be topped off this morning. So, so right here, you got the meter. So if you're a student pilot and you do your uh, solo flight and you had to refuel somewhere, you could always look and see how much fuel they put on your plane so when you get that ticket your receipt that they say hey you we just put 20 pounds you, you already know it's true right uh but this is how would you know uh, typically fueling the plane doesn't take much yep uh still some hand So once that's done, I need to verify, even though I know the plane is stopped up in front of me, it's full. It's, it's a good habit to go out here and uh, um, and still just measure the fuel in the tank, do that physical check because it's a really good habit to get used to it. So that's what I'm going to do next. But also, need to check, make sure there is no oh, uh, water in the tank. So be checking for that, trying to look for residue, uh, the contamination, dirt, anything like that. So, so you can see that's a total of 18.9. All right, Sam, you have a good one, man. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming out here. Gotta put the preheater back in, right? It's already on? Alright, so that's... Alright, so you gotta be careful with this. It's on already, right? You gotta turn it off, right? Just cut the uh, the power. Or? Yeah, just cut the. Um, Show me again, cause I know I've done it before, but. Yeah, just cut the gas out. Okay, close it. And then, once the flame dies down, shut off the uh, fan. This is the switch for the okay, fan. That's okay, that's easy. it. Too easy. Right. Oh, have a good day, man. Appreciate you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish my uh, pre-check, pre-flight. They do not push. And antennas. Yeah. Hey, good morning. How are you today? Say again? Oh, you fly with Paul? I'm with uh, Peter with Paul. Oh, Peter. Yeah, you do fly with Peter. How are you? Good, man. Yeah, yeah. I like the GoPro. Yeah, yeah, man. I always record stuff. I have one inside the cockpit, too. Yeah? Because, like I mentioned before, like, my CFI tells me a lot of things. Sometimes I don't capture it. So, when I go home and I'm looking at the video and I'm listening, so it's really... Remember everything you recall, but yeah. on the plane at the beginning I couldn't recall anything. It was I, just a lot of stuff. I agree 100 percent Peter and I talked about the same thing. Yeah. He told me. He told me about you and the GoPro, and that's what you do. Yeah. And man, if it helps, more power to you. Yeah, it's yeah. A lot to remember, I mean. Oh yeah, because though I have I had to learn like to get the the one and I pay like twenty dollars online for them. I just go to like Facebook, people have them for sale. Oh yeah. So it's not expensive. So it's worth the the money i just like how to get the audio because this one doesn't give you audio when when you're flying but the other one everything that you hear yeah. 
Yeah, you, you, you listen to your, uh, you did a cross country solo. Last yeah, time. yeah, I finished them all. Yeah, yeah, I finished all my solo. Go, yeah, yeah, it was good. The one when I went to Florida. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I went to uh, Fernandina Beach. Oh, it was a two hour, I think, because I had to fly all the way to uh, Savannah yeah. and then fly off the coast to Fernandina. I bet that was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful view because you have restricted area. So, uh, my Paul told me just go um, go to Savannah, talk to them, send you to Fernandino. You know, it was good because you land there and then they let you borrow the car to go out to the beach, get oh, some lunch. Cool. Oh yeah, got some lunch, met some people, you know, flown right back. That's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was great. How far are you with the training? Um, uh, this will be, I did my first night flight and first IFR last week. Mm. And today will be our first cross country. Where are you heading? And I say cross country. I don't. I don't have a clue. I don't know. I'm always surprised when Peter gets here. Oh. So I don't. I don't know. See, I didn't operate like that. Um, I followed strict rules. Like I needed to know my lesson uh -huh. in advance, so I study for it. Because with cross country, there's a lot of. Um, uh, you have to plan it. Like you, you plan the whole thing. Like you know, from the learn how to use like the, the charts well we did that the other night yeah uh, i'll tell you four. i'll tell you how we he said he said schedule four hours uh -huh. which is why you and i uh, were jumping back and forth on the plane from the schedule <laughs> this week i realized um, it opened it was not supposed to be open this morning I had, I had it for he likes this plane yeah. and i like that one. yeah yeah and, i mean i don't care either way yeah yeah but um, i had this one scheduled for eight and ten that he said try to get a four hour slot mm. so i scheduled a four hour slot with that one and then he said he couldn't do the second two hours and I tried to get that one, and by the time I let this one go, you got it. Like, oh, that one, so we're good. And then he had an opening at his 10:30 opening camp, or his 10:30 canceled. So yeah. No. So I really don't know what we're doing today. But we spent about six hours the other night going through charts. Okay. And, and going over everything. And That's good, Dad. So, so I don't know. So when I did my cross country, are you guys doing over 50 miles? It will be over 50 miles. I'm okay. Sure. So we this is to this is going to be the 150 miles then. Probably. So the one we did, we went from here to Somerville, South Carolina, and that was about 90. And then we went to uh, Low County, 